Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Minnesota House of Representatives Transportation Finance and Policy Committee for this uh, March 15th, 2002. Our first item of business is the call of the roll. Mr. Dodge. Chair Hornstein. Present. Hornstein, present. Vice Chair Cagle. Present. Cagle, present. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, present. Petersburg, present. Representative Barr. Here. Barr, present. Representative Bernardi. Present. Bernardi, present. Representative Elkins. Present. Elkins, present. Representative Frederick. Present. Frederick, present. Representative Houseman. Present. Houseman, present. Representative Heinrich. Heinrich, present. Heinrich, present. Representative Kosnick. Present. Kosnick, present. Representative Mason. Mason, present. Mason, present. Representative Murphy. Representative Murphy. Representative Nelson. Nelson, present. Nelson, present. Representative Olson. Olson, present. Olson, present. Representative Richardson. Present. Richardson, present. Representative Torkelson. Torkelson, present. Torkelson, present. Representative West. West, present. West, present. There is a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Dodge. Our next item of business is the uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, Representative Petersburg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I did read over the minutes and I do move their approval. Thank you. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All of those opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Representative Petersburg. Uh, and now, members, we have uh, four bills on our agenda today. And our first bill is House File 2771 from Chair Becker Finn. Uh, this relates to counties be authorizing counties uh, to have sp uh, specific speed limits. Um, and um, uh, Chair Becker Finn, welcome to the committee. And um, uh, please tell us about your bill. I understand you have a DE1 amendment. I think we'll adopt that first, then we can get to the bill and testifier. So if you could let us know about the amendment. Yes, I thank you, Chair Hornstein. Uh, so this has been an effort uh, years in the making uh, to try to make our roads in Ramsey County safer, uh, particularly for pedestrians and cyclists. And uh, this amendment, um, the, the previous, the underlying 2771 language applied statewide. Uh, to all counties, the feedback we got was that not all counties wanted uh, this option, but Ramsey County still does. And so this DE1 uh, would narrow the bill so that it just applies to roads in Ramsey County where this may be necessary. Thank you, um, Chair Beckerfin. And just by the way, I forgot to mention that uh, we are going to lay over the motion and I will move to lay over House File 2771 for possible inclusion in an omnibus transportation bill. So is there, and I'll also move the DE1 amendment. So is there any discussion to the amendment? Uh, seeing none, uh, and this will be a voice vote members, all those in favor of incorporating the DE1 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All of those opposed, the motion prevails. And we now have a House File 2771 as amended before us in the shape that the author would like us to consider it and continue uh, Chair Becker Finn. Right, uh, thank you, Chair Hornstein. Uh, so as I mentioned in my description of the amendment, this is a bill that would, uh, as amended, uh, that would allow Ramsey County to establish a speed limit of 30 miles per hour on uh, certain residential roadways uh, without sort of going through the entire process of uh, in engineering and traffic investigation. And, and what we know and what has been brought to my attention for Literally, this is one of those issues that has been uh, in my community has been an issue since the day I was sworn into office in that um, we have roads in Ramsey County that are technically highways, county highways, but they're now very populated with lots of folks living along those roads as well as parkland, uh, schools, churches uh, along roads that are 40 miles per hour, um, which means that people routinely drive 50 miles per hour. Uh, there's no sort of, we don't have sidewalks. This isn't like uh, downtown areas where you've got sidewalks and pathways and other ways to keep people safe. Um, we've got very high speeds on roads that it just, 
common sense and you know anyone who travels those roads can understand why it would be unsafe and so uh this would allow some local control for ramsey county uh to make the call you know they would still wouldn't force them to change a speed limit would but would give them the option to do so if they decide that that's something that uh they need to do to keep citizens safe and i really want to um emphasize that uh collision speed ma matters uh, 5% of pedestrians are, would die if they were struck by a vehicle at 20 miles per hour. 40% would, would be deaths at 30 miles per hour and 80% um, at 40 miles per hour. So the speed really matters. And I know there've been some discussion in the past, so are there other ways you can make the roadway safe? Well, yes, there are other ways that we can make the roadway safer, but at the end of the day, if people are driving 40 miles per hour um, and someone is struck, uh, there are really terrible consequences. And to that, um, we we do have a testifier here today uh, who's a constituent of mine who unfortunately had this experience happen to them on one of these county roads that goes right through parkland um, in the city of Roseville. And so I do think that, you know, at the end of the day, the point of this bill is safety and especially the safety of our, our pedestrians, uh, whoever they may be. And with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I uh, would like to make mo most, most, most of our time go to our testifiers uh, to speak to uh, why this is so important. And I believe uh, Mr. Slay is the um, testifier who was personally impacted by the current situation. Thank you, um, uh, Chair Becker Finn. And I'll just say before I introduce uh, Mr. Slay is that um, we did have uh, an entire hearing on uh, pedestrian safety and also including some of the equity issues related to that. So I do appreciate your bringing this forward and, and it is a priority of our committee um, to really engage with this issue. Um, so with that, um, our first testifier is, as Chair Becker Finn mentioned, Mr. Ben Slay. Uh, Mr. Slay, welcome to the Transportation Committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Madam Chair Becker Finn. My name is Benjamin Slay. I'm a resident of Roseville uh, and I have a, uh, a personal testimony, as you heard. I have served as a judge advocate in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, this issue concerns my son who was hit in the major intersection of Central Park in Roseville uh, by a vehicle going at 40 miles an hour. And as uh, Chair Becker Finn pointed out, uh, there is a, a, an 80% uh, fatality rate for someone, an individual hit by a vehicle at, at 40 miles an hour. My son David was a jogger going through that uh, heavily foot traveled uh, pedestrian crosswalk in Central Park. Uh, exactly uh, two years and six months ago today on, uh, on uh, September the 15th uh, of, of 2019. And uh, by the grace of God, he ultimately survived uh, those injuries. Uh, I have uh, some photos that I took, if I can share on the screen, showing that the uh, intersection is is very visible but it, it, let me see if i can bring the uh the photo up uh let's see uh i guess i don't i, I don't have it i have uh uh provided uh, mr howe with uh, the the photos it shows the uh intersection has good visibility for about 100 yards leading up to it with no obstructions to a motorist uh, who could see the pedestrians approaching the intersection. But the problem is about 200 yards before this pedestrian crosswalk, uh, there is a bend in the road and you can't see the crosswalk at all until you uh, make it past that, that bend in the road. And if somebody's barreling along at 40 miles an hour, by the time they realize that they're approaching a crosswalk and have to slam on their brakes, they may not do it. And that's uh, exactly what, what happened with my son. The, uh, the driver that hit him didn't uh, begin to apply the brakes at all. Uh, and it was a, uh, a tragedy. Uh, 
My son doesn't recall any of the uh, impact or injury because of, of head trauma that, that he received. And it has been a long uh, road to recovery. Uh, but uh, by the grace of God, he's, he's recovering and, and doing well. But it, it, it seems to me, and you'll see these photos of, of the intersection. I've presented uh, Mr. Howe with three photos, uh, two leading up to the uh, particular pedestrian crosswalk and one of my son uh, as he uh, was injured on that day. And uh, if the, the city and, and uh, local governments do not have the authority to lower that speed limit, I, I fear that more tragedies such as this could possibly occur. And I applaud uh, Chair uh, Jamie Becker Finn for taking the initiative to try to address this matter and to uh, to get some resolution for safety of the citizens in Ramsey County. Um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Slay. I, uh, I, I think that uh, Mr. Howe can, has the capacity to screen share. So um, is that correct, Mr. Howe? Yep, just one moment, Mr. Chair pulling it up. Uh, I, I put it into a Word document to try and have it in one place. Just uh, okay. one moment, please. Well, you, you know technology a lot better than I do, so. Um, Mr. Slade, we will make every effort here to share your your yeah. your photos, and if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll send them to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate but, it. <clears throat> How are we doing, Mr. Howe? I, I'm getting just an indication that you started screen sharing, but I don't see photographs. Well, we'll give this a Another few seconds here, and if uh, if we can't screen share, um, Mr. Slay will uh, certainly send it to the committee. Thank you, sir. Okay, well, uh, unfortunately, I think we're having a technological glitch here, um, and uh, if, if we can again get those up, we will, but uh, I would like to proceed. Uh, we have a... Um, very uh, packed agenda here. So I would like to proceed to our next testifier, uh, Ramsey County Commissioner Nicole Fretham. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, my apologies if I'm not. Uh, Commissioner, welcome to the committee and please state your name for the record. Thank you. Uh, my name is Commissioner Nicole Joy Fretham. And yes, you pronounced it correctly. <laughs> okay, we'll proceed with your testimony and, and welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Chair and Committee. I, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be here. Uh, and I do want to recognize, and I think some of them will be speaking after us, that there are some concerns from engineers regarding changes like this to our speed limit laws. And I really appreciate their experience and the work that they're doing statewide to address vehicle speeds on roads with the statewide speed limit vision project. Uh, unfortunately, as Representative Becker mentioned, this is an ongoing problem that has been happening for her since day one and me as well. Uh, and we need some action immediately. Uh, as a board at the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, we're still working through what our full position is regarding this. We had a workshop last fall and another one coming up next month. So I'm here today, um, not as a full representative of the board, but representing what I have heard from my constituents and what I see myself as a community member as a major safety issue in my community. Uh, generally, you know, the speed limits for many of our county roads here in Ramsey County, uh, particularly in suburban Ramsey County, were set when people were driving through these areas to the country. They were going to their cabin on Lake Owasso or to visit the farmland that is now North Oaks. Uh, and that's when, <laughs> when you were taking your Model T, uh, 40 miles an hour seems great. Uh, but that's not what it looks like right now. As Representative Becker had mentioned, these roads are residential. 
if you are driving many of these roads, you will see housing density between what uh, statute defines as an urban or rural residential district. You'll see parks, you'll see churches, you'll see schools. Uh, many of these county roads are, are um, roads that have one lane in each direction, so two lanes, one in each direction. Um, you will see bends, such as the one Mr. Slay described, where his son was injured. Uh, you'll probably see some deer, uh, especially in Roseville South Shoreview area. Um, but some people don't really pay attention to this environment. Unfortunately, we see people driving, uh, they see a 40 mile per hour speed limit and they will blast past um, these neighborhoods where there are children, where there might be pedestrians or cyclists or joggers uh, and deer. Um, and they'll choose to take these streets because, oh, 40 miles an hour, I can really make some good headway instead of going on our roads with more established infrastructure um, that also have stoplights. You know, you've heard what happened to Mr. Slay's son, uh, another constituent, uh, very shortly after I took office, wrote to me that he had seen families with children jumping into yards to avoid fast moving cars along his county road. Um, a week later, a week after he spoke to me and initially reached out to me about the issues along this road, he sent me pictures of his vehicle, which had been parked along the shoulder legally, uh, which was completely totaled by one such driver uh, driving swiftly around the county road. Uh, in, in recognition that there is much work happening at a high level, the amendment language introduced today really seeks to, to narrowly tailor what we're, what we're looking to change, that uh, we recognize that county engineers don't want this to go statewide and that it shouldn't be every county road, that we need to think about the use and purpose. This language really seeks to address the issue that um, Representative Becker Finn and I see as most urgent, and that is these county roads um, that were at one point uh, rural highways and are now residential roadways. And how do we ensure the safety of the children and families that live along them, that uh, recreate in the parks along them, that go to church and school along them, and just narrowly seeking to address that issue now as we continue to work uh, statewide with the Department of Transportation and our County Engineers Association to, to put forward a more uh, high-level vision. In addition to exploring many of those other ways to change driver behavior and ensure pedestrian and bicyclist safety, you know, those take time and money. And even though we have corridor studies happening in Ramsey County right now on three roads that would be impacted by this legislation, the time it will take before any of those uh, infrastructure and physical changes are done to promote safety, it's years away. And we need action now. And, I, and that's what this language seeks to do to provide us a measure now to, to do what we would be able to do. Uh, if we were able to have the, the finances and infrastructure to do things like bike trails right now. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to, to get some action and ensure that no one else's family has to go through what uh, Mr. Slay's family has endured. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. That was very helpful and compelling testimony. Um, I know that there are a number of member questions. So what we're going to do is um, go through our public testimony and then uh, have questions of the author and of any of the testifiers. So our next testifier is Betty Wheeler. Uh, welcome to the committee and please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and the Honorable Committee members for allowing me to speak. My name is Betty Wheeler. I have lived in my house on Raymond Avenue for 23 years in the St. Anthony Park neighborhood in St. Paul. Speeds on Raymond Avenue have increased a lot during that time. Fewer bicyclists and pedestrians now feel comfortable to use it. There are more trucks on Raymond, and many trucks are now much larger. Large trucks psychologically push other drivers to drive faster. Young families won't allow their children to walk or bike the three blocks to the elementary school. This is all very different than 20 years ago. It has become increasingly difficult for pedestrians to cross Raymond due to driver's speeds. The elementary school no longer allows their older kids to be crossing guards because it is too unsafe. The numerous young families who have moved into my neighborhood in the last two decades want better pedestrian and bike safety on Raymond. Please support a law change to allow county commissioners to set the speed on county roads like Raymond to match the limits on city-owned streets, a limit that is safe for all users. As Representative Beckerfin noted, 
Speed does make a huge difference. When you include pedestrians hit by vehicles going 20 miles an hour, then the number is 10% are killed or severely injured. But when drivers going only 32 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour faster, and include pedestrians killed and severely injured, the number is 90%. The parts of Raymond owned by the city have a speed limit of 20 miles an hour. The parts that are county owned have a 30 mile an hour limit. These isolated county segments make it very confusing for drivers to know what the speed limit is because drivers cannot tell which parts are city owned and which are county owned. Raymond is a residential street. The bike lane is only designated by paint. There's no barrier separation to protect bicyclists. So bicyclists feel they are competing with the adjacent driving lane and driver speeds make it difficult for pedestrians to cross Raymond as well. The safety of all of residents, pedestrians and bicyclists is imperiled by vehicles driving at 30 miles an hour. Young families will never use bike lanes where they feel unsafe due to the speed of drivers in adjacent driving lanes. The urban county segments must be safe as well as feel safe for all to use. In that October 26 webinar, the Ramsey County Commissioners stated they need the legislature's help to change the state law to allow them to set the speed lim limit on county segments to match the city streets so families can feel safe to bike or walk on streets similar to Raymond. Please adopt this bill in a way that allows everyone, young and old, to bike and walk much more safely along streets similar to Raymond. Your efforts to make this change so county commissioners can set the speed limits appropriate for county road segments depending on local circumstances will benefit pedestrians, bicyclists, and the general public in every place that needs it. Remember, at the beginning and end of every trip, we are all pedestrians. We just want our streets safe for all to use. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Ms. Wheeler, uh, for your testimony. Um, we have three more, uh, it looks like four more testifiers here. Um, first, uh, Darren Milkey, uh, and then followed by Joe Gustafson. Um, Mr. Milkey, available? Yes, thank you, Chair Hornstein. And Welcome to the committee. Uh, please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Okay, just a mic check that you can hear me okay? Yes, you're coming through loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Hornstein and community, community members uh, for the opportunity to testify today. Uh, my name is Darren Milkey. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Minnesota. I am the current chair of the Legislative Advocacy Committee of the Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers. Uh, we're an affiliate state society of the National Society of Professional Engineers. The Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers is a statewide professional association that provides professional engineering development and professional engineer licensure advocacy for engineering disciplines and industries in Minnesota. The Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers is the leading voice of licensed professional engineers in Minnesota. Our members include professional engineers, experienced career engineers, early career engineers, and students that covers a diverse range of engineering disciplines and industries. Our legislative committee was recently made aware of House File 2771, which proposes changes to state law that specifically includes language that states that speed limits may be set by a local jurisdiction without conducting an engineering and traffic investigation. The Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers does not support the existing statute language or the proposed language changes uh, within Minnesota Statute 169.14, Subdivision 5, 5H. That allows for speed limit changes without an investigation review and recommendation from a licensed professional engineer. Uh, we were not made aware until recently of the statute change that occurred in 2020 that included this language uh, that didn't require an engineering investigation. The existing statute language appears to be inconsistent in regards to an engineering investigation and that clarification is needed to state that an engineering and traffic investigation by the Commissioner of Transportation is not needed. We believe this was the intention at the time when this language was introduced and approved and that an engineering investigation is still a necessary requirement for a local, local agency or to perform. 
The Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers believes in a world where the public can be confident that engineering decisions affecting their lives are made by qualified and ethically accountable professional engineers. And we oppose state laws that include language that exempts work that should be completed by or under the supervision of a licensed professional engineer and responsible charge to safeguard the, the health and safety of the public. Having a licensed professional engineer in responsible charge represents the best case scenario for protecting the public health and safety. We urge the Transportation Finance and Policy Committee and state legislators to prioritize public safety by removing this engineering exemption for a local road jurisdiction from Minnesota Statutes 169.14, Subdivision 5H, and to eliminate any further exemptions. We understand the background behind this specific statute change and feel that there are ways to include licensed professional engineers and speed limit changes to provide recommendations to each local road jurisdiction. When setting a speed limit, agencies should consider a range of factors such as pedestrian bicycles activity, crash history, land use context, intersection spacing, driveway density, roadway geometry, roadside conditions, roadway functional classification, traffic volume, and of course the observed speeds. To achieve the desired operating speeds, agencies often need to implement other speed management strategies concurrently with setting speed limits. Uh, some examples would be traffic calming and speed enforcement. Simply changing the speed limits without professional expertise can introduce unintended safety risks to some of the users and potentially opens liability to agencies that make arbitrary speed limit changes. I appreciate the opportunity to testify on this bill on behalf of the Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers. And I'd appreciate the opportunity to discuss with you, the committee members and the bill authors as to how licensed professional engineers should be included in the process to achieve your desired outcomes related to transportation safety. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Melke. Uh, next up, we have Joe Gustafson followed by Commissioner Clark. Uh, Mr. Gustafson, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, my name is Joe Gustafson. I'm the traffic engineer for Washington County, and I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the of AMC, the Association of Minnesota Counties, and MCEA, the Minnesota County Engineers Association. And thank you for the opportunity to speak today to voice our concerns with this bill. Uh, can you hear me okay, first of all? Yes, you're coming through very clear. All right, excellent, thank you. So transportation is an activity that crosses many jurisdictional boundaries and consistency of rules and expectations is important if we are to expect compliance. AMC and MCEA each have longstanding platform positions recently reaffirmed, supporting the exclusive role of the Commissioner of Transportation in setting location-specific speed limits in Minnesota. And we acknowledge and appreciate that the scope of this bill as amended is limited to a small geographic area, but respectfully, we're concerned that this bill would set a troublesome precedent. If enacted, we expect that this will invariably result in a long line of requests for similar exemptions being brought before legislators and county boards. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that the current process is not perfect. It takes some time, perhaps it gives too much weight to some criteria, not enough to others, and speed is definitely an issue on our roads, especially lately. And as engineers, we strive to make our roads safe for all users. Um, but the legislation uh, here is not how we can get there. And in fact, changing a posted speed has never been shown to be an effective way of reducing actual speed. And I wish it were that easy. I work alongside these roads. I have coworkers that do as well, uh, especially in work zones. And we know that speed limits often evoke passionate differences of opinion, even among residents of the same area. And despite these challenges, the process that we have is one that our organizations strongly support. It allows for county input while providing a measure of statewide consistency and it protects counties from liability. And it's an objective process that follows national standards which are established by a federal law. Now, these federal requirements provide broad flexibility in determining the speed limit, but they do require that an engineering study be, complete, uh, be completed and they list some recommended considerations. And part of my message here to you today is that these national criteria are changing particularly as it relates to urban and suburban areas, deleting the emphasis on the observed prevailing speed. These changes are coming in the next edition for which the federal comment period already closed last spring. These changes and guidelines will be reflected in Minnesota's process. And in fact, they are required to be. Now speed limits can and do change. 
Uh, the roadway in question here that uh, much of the center is on has not been submitted to this process by Ramsey County since 1997. We believe that the process should be given a chance. And uh, there was also mention made in previous testimony about uh, Raymond Avenue. County boards actually already have speed limit authority on any road that has bike lanes. So that uh, authority is there already. Uh, there's also uh, mentioned by um, uh, by in earlier testimony that uh, there's an effort in Minnesota uh, right now, which is already underway, known as the Minnesota Statewide Speed Limit Vision Project, which has brought together law enforcement, advocacy groups, and state and local engineers mm -hmm. to find ways to improve the process used by the Commissioner of Transportation. Uh, and that can, more information on that can be found at mnspeedlimitvision.org. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment today and for your consideration of these concerns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gustafs. And our next um, testifier, uh, Commissioner Terrell Clark from Stearns County. Good, Good to morning. see you and uh, welcome to the Transportation Committee and please state your name for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. My name is Terrell Clark. I'm a Stearns County Commissioner. I'm speaking on behalf of the Association of Minnesota Counties um, on this issue. Um, I also want to thank Representative Becker Finn for your amendment for narrowing the scope of this. Um, we do as an association uh, broadly, um, we actually had a number of people talking about this uh, just last week. Um, we're concerned that the bill, even as amendment, amended will set a bad precedent. Uh, the association as a whole supports the current process. We are glad to know about the study that's happening and opportunities to take in other contexts as, because as the example here, there are heartbreaking um, things that happen and safety is paramount. And it is hard when we have people come in front of us who've had something that's happened and we're all just trying to find a solution, which we know is what Representative Becker Finn is trying to do here. We do think the current process takes the politics and emotions out of setting speed limits. Um, we're concerned that even a narrowed bill here could set the stage for others, including inconsistent practices and speed limits. And in some small way, we're even seeing that happening here um, in front of you today. I know our county engineer regularly gets requests from uh, constituents on both sides, wanting speeds to go up and wanting speeds to go down. So truly having a study is important. It's important to use the tools that we already have to the best of our ability. Um, and as was just brought up, there is an opportunity to request a speed study. I'm gonna give you one example. I know you've got uh, many other things on, on your schedule today, um, but we certainly, and Stearns deal with this issue. It happens around the state. And sometimes it's just so hard to fathom, like why hasn't something changed? And the example I wanted to give today, and this is something that perhaps the Ramsey County Board would consider is within uh, the St. Cloud immediate area, uh, St. Cloud Waite Park, there is a county uh, road that um, it's St. Cloud on one side, there's an overpass, it, there's a church at the bottom, there it's down the street from a school, there's a number of apartments and residences. And honestly, one of the oddest things had been over time is that for one stretch of road coming down over that overpass, it was 45 miles an hour and it was, 30 plus the school speed limits um, on one end, and it was a different uh, speed limit on the other end. And constituents came to us, they were really concerned. They were concerned the state wasn't considering this carefully. And our board passed a resolution saying, please do a speed study here. And they did. And ultimately, um, we got that changed. And that is a good process. Now, we'll tell you before that, one of the things that was happening was we had law enforcement that was out there uh, really trying to make sure over by the school where it was 30 um, that uh, the speed limit would be enforced. So one of those signs, electronic signs that tell us how fast we're going was put in place which was helpful. I, I don't know about all of you, but one of the one of those comes up. I know that I'm always paying attention even more so what's going on. But the other thing that happened is is an officer was sitting there. Well, during the time an officer sat there, the speed limits were followed. Then 
the, the officer, they stopped it being able to enforce it because clearly they can't enforce all speed limits everywhere. And what was found was within two weeks, um, they were still monitoring this, people started speeding again. And so it's hard because we do want people following speed limits, but as was already indicated, we need to look at other tools as well. So I appreciate and totally understand this challenge and hope that the county board and uh, MnDOT does do a speed study because one way or the other, odds are an engineering study should be done on this road. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, all right, our final testifier is Brian Sorensen, the state traffic engineer for MnDOT. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the council or the committee. I'm Brian Sorensen, I'm the state traffic engineer with MnDOT's Office of Traffic Engineering. And I will keep this pretty brief. I think my main points have already been um, covered. Um, you know, I think the main one here is we are fully on board with the objective here, the spirit and intent of this, the uh, testimony in regards to safety and how critical it is on our system. Um, you know, the experience of Mr. Slay and his son, uh, you know, as one of the co-chairs of our TZD program, uh, that is all compelling to me. And it's, um, it's something that needs attention, uh, safety in our system. And Mr. Chair, as you know, um, you know, we spent an hour and a half in this committee talking about traffic safety, what's happened on our roads in the last year, you know, the types of things we are doing, could be doing moving forward to address this issue. Um, it is absolutely paramount. So fully on board with the spirit and intent. I think the main question here is, you know, ultimately how effective is changing speed limits in uh, reducing these safety risks? And as engineers, I can tell you, we're not aware um, of uh, reduced speed limits being effective in reducing the risk of those crashes. And so I know there's a lot of discussion about speed limits going on across the country. There are states that are changing their process. Um, you know, as has been mentioned, we are part of a process right now to look at our process, to evaluate whether it is most effective, what are the kinds of things we can do to adjust um, the process we use for setting our speed limits in Minnesota in order to improve safety on our roadways. Uh, so we are going through that process right now. Um, but ultimately, I think the question, one question to, if this were to move forward, you know, a question to think about is if we do reduce speed limits and the speeds don't change and the safety issues are still there, then what are we doing? I think that's what we need to spend some time thinking about um, because ultimately based on the experience that we have seen, uh, changing speed limits largely doesn't change the way people behave. Um, a couple other points, uh, the, the point on consistency that Ms. Wheeler hit on um, is right on. Consistency matters, which is why we're talking about this statewide. And if we take approaches um, that are different and more effective, we need to implement those statewide. You know, so taking this as a one county at a time approach um, does concern me. Um, and then lastly, the tech traffic investigation piece. Um, you know, what a traffic investigation does is bring to light the factors involved that people consider when they um, choose their speeds as they drive. So I, I don't know why we would want to go through a process without bringing that information um, forward to those that are making decisions. So I would always advocate for a traffic investigation to be part of a process to ultimately determine a speed limit. And with that, I will wrap up, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sorensen. And uh, members, we're, um, we have three member questions and we'll get through those, um, but we're running a little behind and we have three more bills. So if members could keep their questions short and respondents could keep their respondents as crisp, responses as crisp as possible, I would appreciate it. So our, our three member questions are from Representative Elkins first, then Representative Olson and Representative Petersburg. Representative Elkins. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I want to be cooperative, but I'm, I'm going to have a couple of questions. <laughs> um, first of all, for Mr. Mr. Sorensen, um, if a city or a county was to request a speed study, um, how much weight is given uh, in that engineering study to the 80, so-called 85th percentile speed? And are you asking Mr. Sorensen that question? Mr. Sorensen first, yes. Okay. Mr. Sorensen. 
Well, Mr. Chair and Representative Elkins, um, it is a main factor, mm -hmm. um, but there are other considerations as well. And so we look at things like um, the 10 mile an hour pace. So um, which 10 mile an hour range do most drivers fall within? And that's taken into account. Um, we also are looking at the roadway corridor itself. So we're looking at roadway type and condition. We're looking at location and type of access points. We're looking at um, the existing traffic controls that drivers are subjected to. We're looking at crash history. We're looking at traffic volume. We're looking at site distances. Sometimes there are things along a corridor that when someone chooses their speed, they're not aware of that they should be. And so those things are taken into account. The extent to which kind of depends on the corridor um, because sometimes those other factors do weigh in a little bit more uh, because they're not readily apparent to drivers. But um, right now it is a main tenant, as Mr. Gustafson mentioned, um, it's getting a lot of discussion nationwide as wh whether it should be a requirement that states uh, consider that. And right now um, there is an element in the manual that says you should be setting the speed limit within five minutes, within five miles an hour of the 85th percentile. Um, so, you know, how it is applied now can vary. It's a main tenant for sure. And how it's applied moving forward could change. Very quick follow-up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gustafson. Very quick follow-up, Representative Elkins, and we'll move on to Representative Olson. Representative yeah, Elkins. So, Mr. Sorensen, I, you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, study on this topic over the last 10 years, uh, at the federal level in particular. Um, but the, the Minnesota Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices was last updated at, just in, in 2019, and it didn't pick up any of that stuff. So cities and counties don't ask for speed studies because they know what the answer is going to be, is that under the current methodology, if there is speeding observed on a road, the speed study is going to say that the answer is to raise the speed limit. And that's got to change. Uh, you're, you're, we have, you know, I, I agree with uh, you and all of the other engineers on the study that the single biggest factor that influences speeding is the design of the roadway itself. But in the case of, of these streets like Raymond Avenue in, in, in St. Paul, uh, in Ramsey County, uh, we have a situation where you clearly have a, a street that was uh, designed long ago, does not meet contemporary design standards, and yet we're still applying a one-size-fits-all speed limit policy to a street like that, even when it's clearly not appropriate. Um, if you know if the if the, in, if the profession wants us to take you seriously, you kind of need to get you get caught up with the current, uh, you know, at, you know, evidence uh, on on the topic and and reflect that in your design guidelines, or you're going to keep seeing proposals like this. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your comment, Representative Elkins. Uh, Representative Olson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the first question has already been answered involving what's the process. And, and obviously from most of the testifiers here, there is a very well-known process to get your speed studies done, to get your, your traffic speeds reduced or increased. The process is already there. My question would be to the commissioner of Ramsey County. Um, is there someone on that board who has some form of expertise or some knowledge more about, uh, about these roads and about the speeds? Because personally, speaking from my own experience, um, I could stand next to a road, and if I was right on the sidewalk, someone runs past me, and I look at it, and I say, man, that, that's really fast. Um, but if I'm sitting on my porch, then maybe that wouldn't appear to be so fast. And if I was with my two-year-old, then it would probably be definitely fast. So I'm wondering if someone on the commissioner, on the board of commission has some experience that would make it more less subjective and actual some studies being done as opposed to just looking at a, at a car saying, whoa, that guy's going way too fast. Thank you for the question, Representative Olson. Uh, and uh, we already have uh, Commissioner Fred I'm ready to uh, answer that. Commissioner. Thank you, Representative Olson and Chair Hornstein. Uh, we did have a workshop actually on this last fall where our public works director shared several speed studies uh, done at a handful of roads across the county. Uh, and, and I think the issue here is not were they going 40 or faster than 40, but is 40 the appropriate speed limit in a neighborhood where you, you don't have businesses, uh, your visibility is poor, and it's mostly families, churches, schools, and parks. And I, I think that one in, in general, we do have engineers on the line. You could ask them generally what would be an appropriate speed, dis, uh, 
speed limit for that area. Um, but in terms of the, the speeds themselves, this is something we are continuing to work through in our county. And, and what was already mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, counties do have authority over roads that have bike trails put in where we could reduce the speed limit. Unfortunately, many of these roads that we're referring to, there just isn't the capacity. That you can't just slap in a bike trail on a road, especially in Ramsey County. Um, and, and this is why um, it makes sense to call Ramsey, out, Ramsey County out of it, that we are by far the smallest geographic county in the state of Minnesota. And if you look at our, our patterns of development, especially in the northern suburbs, we were developed much earlier than many of these other counties. Uh, and you can see that impacts in these communities. Many of these county roads also still rely on very uh, rural wastewater management methods like ditch systems. We don't necessarily have sewer lines there. So you can't just put in uh, a sidewalk and call it a day. This is, you know, you, you might also be hearing about our bonding request for uh, 35E and County Road J. Uh, and one of the reasons we need to redo that highway overpass is because if you are coming from the north going down 35E, you can't get off the highway on County Road J because that overpass was built when, why would you be north of County Road J? There's nothing out there. We didn't have Hugo and Lina Lakes and all of these big, beautiful suburbs up there. Um, and Ramsey County, many of our no, no, northern suburbs are, are suffering the benefits and disadvantages of being developed early. So this isn't necessarily a question of, are they actually going 40? That we do have data on that. And we could certainly share the information we received as commissioners last fall from that workshop. Uh, we'll, we'll be having another workshop next month as well. But the question is more, is 40 miles per hour an appropriate speed limit in a neighborhood such as the ones we're calling out specifically in this bill? Thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, Representative Petersburg, then Representative Mason, and we will then uh, wrap up our discussion on this House file. Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm not going to ask a question, but just rather offer um, uh, just a little bit of caution. And that is that this issue has been around for a long time. And, and a lot of cities and counties and townships have, have discussed this uh, in the past. And so my only caution is that oftentimes we as non-professionals or those that that don't have the experience in traffic studies uh, have a perception of what is the proper speed and what isn't. And so if what my caution is that we shouldn't just overrule, overrule their studies, but if there's a concern with how long it takes to do a study or what parameters are within the study, I think that's appropriate for us to discuss uh, along with them so that it becomes more uniform and communities that want to change it have that avenue to do so. But doing it piecemeal like this is probably not the most advantageous way to do it. And we should probably think about how we can make it um, statewide as to uh, the parameters and how we do these studies and have it uniformly appropriate across the way. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you for your comment, Representative Petersburg. Our last member comment or question belongs to Representative Mason. Thank you. I'm thinking it's probably more of a comment I served on uh, the Egan City Council for a number of years, and the number of requests asking for stop signs and changing the uh, the mileage were constantly. Because I remember one time a mayor saying, "People want you know, it basically don't, they don't want anybody driving on their roads. We have to pay for them, but only the the residents should be allowed to drive on that." But nevertheless, the fact that you are just want to bypass the engineers, I think is problematic. And I do agree with one of the comments that Representative Elkins made previously. I can tell you that on one of the streets that we have that wanted uh, a decrease in uh, mileage is what we did do is like we put in two chokers, one at end of each end of the, the road to try to make uh, it, what that does is nearer the roads, it makes people conscious and go a little slower. And we did put up some of the signs, uh, but it's for people to arbitrarily set up their, the mileage I think is we're asking for trouble and we already have the problems. Thank you, Representative Mason for your comment. Um, okay, uh, members, uh, that is it for our questions and testimony. 
Uh, really excellent discussion here today. A lot of important issues raised. Um, Representative uh, and Chair Becker Finn, do you want to um, maybe uh, offer a couple of concluding comments and then we'll lay this bill over for possible inclusion? Yeah, uh, thank you. Becker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so a couple things. Um, I want to make sure that the members realize that the question before us today is the amended language in the DE. So I think half of what's been discussed while is very interesting and helpful is not actually applicable to what we're talking about today, which is should Ramsey County in our unique situation with the way our county was developed and the density of residences in our county be allowed to make these decisions for ourselves. And uh, respectfully to everybody else, uh, Commissioner Fretham and I are the people who actually live in Ramsey County, and we're telling you that this is needed, as well as Mr. Slay. And so while I have met with AMC and the engineers, um, what the reality is, is that nobody's been willing to compromise to work with me on language. So I just accept that they are going to be opposed to this because of whatever their positions have been for a very long time. The reality is, is that people in my community are in danger right now. So to cite health and safety as a reason why we can't do this bill makes no sense because the current law leaves us with a situation where people are not safe. I look at your email, please, and look at the pictures of what happened to Mr. Slay's son while he was jogging in a crosswalk through a park and somebody was driving 40 miles per hour. That's why we're here today. That's why we're pushing this issue. And um, while some of you may be worried about, you know, the precedent this might set for other counties, Ramsey County is unique. And what I'm worried about is preserving the health and safety of the citizens who live and walk um, in my community. And so that really is what's before us. This language is narrow. We're not saying that there would be no consultation with engineers. We're just saying there doesn't need to be a study. Ramsey County has engineers. They would be working with those folks um, on these projects. That's how it would work. It's not saying that none of that matters or that it would be arbitrary. It's just saying we're not requiring a speed study, which as Representative Elkins noted, would likely come back and say that uh, let's raise the speed limit because everyone's already driving too fast. That's not what we want to see happen. And that's why we haven't requested. That's why there hasn't gone through that process. That's why this is necessary. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chair, for your time and attention to this issue. This is about safety. It is about the health and safety of the residents of Ramsey County and uh, really appreciate the attention to this issue. Thank you. Well, thank you so much um, for your uh, thoughtful comments here at the end. And, uh, and again, everybody on both sides of this issue, we appreciated your testimony. So with that, members, um, we're going to be laying over House File 2771 for possible inclusion in an omnibus transportation bill. Thank you, uh, Chair Becker Finn. Our next bill on the agenda is House File 4035. Representative Cleveland has been waiting patiently. And um, I will refer, uh, my motion will be to refer House File 4035 to the General Register. Representative Cleavorn, welcome to the committee and uh, please uh, tell us about your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, this is a DVS uh, policy bill to remove qualified driver requirements for special plates and to make a technical correction for an ignition interlock bill that we passed uh, last year. Um, do you just want me to jump right in? Yeah, you can. And I know that this has been an issue of concern to you personally, and you did a bill last year that we heard. So thank yeah. you for continuing your work on this. Proceed, uh, Representative. Okay. So the first part, I call it a redundancy provision and a paperwork reduction. So certain drivers who uh, license plates were impounded as a result of an impaired driving offense are required to obtain special plates. The commissioner may issue the special plates only if the violator is able to identify a qualified driver who meets each of the requirements listed in the statute. The qualified driver information is not recorded by DVS or used for any purpose. The applicant for the special plates is required to identify a qualified driver with a valid license and attest that only a driver with a valid license may use the vehicle. It's a redundancy that's already required by other state law 
uh, related to this vehicle operation. This proposal removes the requirement that the applicant for the special plates list this qualified driver with a valid license in order to get the special plates. The second portion of this bill pertains to the ignition interlock device program, and it's a drafting error. If you look at the bill on line 3.16, uh, you will see the word suspended, but in order to comply with the other statutes, the word should be revoked. So it is just changing one word on line 316 from suspended to revoked. And Mr. Chair, that is my bill. Thank you so much. Um, I know that uh, we have uh, Mr. Zhang uh, available for testimony or questions. Uh, Mr. Zhang, did you, want to, did you want to testify or just simply be available? Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, I could just be available for questions. Thank you, okay. Representative Claiborne. Thank yes, you thank so you. much. Um, okay, let's uh, see. I uh, scanning our virtual room here. I don't see any member questions. So um, I don't know if you had any concluding comments. Representative here. Representative Cagle has her hand up. Oh, I, yes, I see it. There we go. Thank you for that assist, uh, Representative Claiborne. Um, Representative Cagle, Vice Chair Cagle, question or comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm just going to take this opportunity because I think everybody has heard me complain about the uh, reinstatement process for people with um, strictly drug-based DUIs, and I know that um, it's something that I, I, whenever I take the, the, or whenever I hear these bills, I want to take the opportunity to talk about how we really need to streamline that process. Um, I know currently people with um, drug only offenses still have to get an admission interlock, which doesn't really um, get to why they lost their driver's license. They can still be using drugs and, and not alcohol. And so I um, just wanted to, I know Representative Cleborn and I talked about this previously, but um, just would be remiss if I didn't bring that up. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Cagle. Um, now I do not see any additional hands. So uh, Representative Cleveborn, if you wanted to leave us with any final thoughts, uh, you did a pretty thorough job describing the bill. So any any closing statement? No, thank you. I appreciate the committee's time. I know you have many bills to hear. It is really just a cleanup bill and I ask for your yes vote. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Cleveborn. Uh, with that, members, um, I'm going to remove, renew uh, my motion that House File 4035 be referred to the General Register. Uh, Mr. Dodge, please take the roll. Chair Hornstein? Uh, Hornstein, aye. Hornstein, aye. Vice Chair Cagle? Aye. Cagle, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Barr? Barr, aye. Barr, aye. Representative Bernardi? Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, I. Representative Elkins? Elkins, I. Elkins, I. Representative Frederick? I. Frederick, I. Representative Houseman? I. Houseman, I. Representative Heinrich? Heinrich, I. Heinrich, I. Representative Kosnick? I. Kosnick, I. Representative Mason? Mason, I. Mason, I. Representative Murphy? Representative Murphy. Representative Nelson. Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Olson. Olson, aye. Olson, aye. Representative Richardson. Aye. Richardson, aye. Representative Torkelson. Torkelson, aye. Torkelson, aye. Representative West. West, aye. West, aye. There are 16 ayes and zero nays. Uh, thank you, members, and uh, thank you, Representative Cleveland. You're on your way to the General Register. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, our next bill on the uh, agenda is House File uh, 3805 uh, relating to capital security, and um, I am going to move that House File 3805 be re referred to the General Register, and our author is uh, Representative Nash. Welcome to the committee, Representative Nash. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Thank you for having me in and hearing my bill today. I appreciate it. Um, I'll be very brief since I know you've got more ahead of you, but 3805 is a bill that repeals the sunset, which would happen on June 30th of this year for the Capital Area Security Committee. It's an advisory committee that is 
composed of two Democrats and two uh, Republicans from uh, the respective chambers. And what our focus is, along with members of the administration and private sector folks, is to provide a level of security and planning for security and thoughtfulness and, and how do we uh, keep the greater uh, capital complex safe. And with the the timeliness of what's been going on in the last number of years, we find that our work is not going to be done by uh, the 22nd of this year. And we believe that there is tremendous value in continuing this. Uh, my co-author on this is Representative Winkler, and the companions are being carried by Senator Dibble uh, and Senator Limmer in the Senate. So this is a very bipartisan approach, and I would appreciate your support. Thank you so much for carrying this bill, Representative Nash, and your service on this very important committee, uh, the, the Capital Advisory Committee, Security Advisory Committee. Um, we have um, Ms. Knutson available also. I don't know, again, if she's testifying or just a, a resource. Um, did you have any comments, uh, Ms. Knutson? Good morning, Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, no formal comments. We just uh, appreciate Rep. Nash's uh, support of this bill and uh, are here to answer any questions. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. I do not see any questions or comments. So, um, Representative Nash, did you want to leave us with any closing thoughts? Thank you for your support. Excellent. Well, members, then I am going to renew my motion that uh, House File 3805 be referred to the General Register, and we will have Mr. Dodge take the roll. Chair Hornstein? Hornstein votes aye. Hornstein, aye. Vice Chair Cagle? Aye. Cagle, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Barr? Barr, aye. Barr, aye. Representative Bernardi? Bernardi, aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Elkins? Elkins, aye. Elkins, aye. Representative Frederick? Aye. Frederick, aye. Representative Houseman? Aye. Houseman, aye. Representative Heinrich? Heinrich, aye. Heinrich, aye. Representative Kosnick? Kosnick, aye. Kosnick, aye. Representative Mason? Mason, aye. Mason, aye. Representative Murphy? Representative Murphy? Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Olson? Olson, aye. Olson, aye. Representative Richardson? Aye. Richardson, aye. Representative Torkelson? Torkelson, aye. Torkelson, aye. Representative West? West, aye. West, aye. There are 16 ayes and zero nays. Thank you, um, Representative Nash. You're on your way to the General Register. Thank you, committee members, and um, appreciate your work again, Representative Nash, on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a great day. Thank you. Um, all right, we have one more bill on our uh, agenda for today, um, and that's House File 3216 uh, from our own member, uh, committee member, Representative Frederick, and I'll... Um, uh, re refer. I will move to re refer uh, House File 3216 to the General Register. And I believe you have a A1 author's amendment, uh, Representative Frederick? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. All right. Why don't you uh, brief us on the amendment and we will vote to incorporate it into the bill? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The amendment is pretty straightforward. Uh, the original bill is requesting that two township representatives get added to the LRIP advisory board, uh, and the amendment reduces that down to just one member of a township. Okay, thank you. So um, the A1 amendment is before us. That is the A1 amendment to House File 3216. Is there discussion? I do not see any, so we will up oh, uh, Representative Elkins. Just real quick, uh, I, I wanted to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Representative Frederick for bringing this forward. I have actually served on this board back when I was a city council member in Bloomington, and I think it's entirely appropriate the township should be represented on this body. Okay, um, and uh, we'll take that into consideration. Um, uh, but now we're voting on the A1 amendment, and we can do a voice vote on that. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All of those opposed, 
the motion prevails. So members, we have uh, House File 3216 as amended before us, and uh, we do have a testifier. Uh, Jeff Kruger is here from the Association of Townships. Mr. Kruger, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the uh, record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. My name is Jeff Krieger. I am the Executive Director of the Minnesota Association of Townships, and my association is in favor of, of uh, HF uh, 3216. I do want to thank Representative Frederick for author authoring this bill. I do appreciate that, along with uh, Representative Torkelson, uh, who's instrumental in getting us uh, getting us to, to get this bill drafted. We really appreciate that. Currently, there are, there are five members that are on this board. Uh, there are two count two from the counties, one county engineer, one county commissioner, and three representatives from the cities. One city engineer, one uh, city representative from large cities above five thousand, one representative, uh, one city representative from cities uh, less than five thousand. This is a program that is funded periodically by the legislature, and all uh, all four entities, counties, uh, large cities, small cities, and townships. Uh, are able to partake uh, with, with this funding and use it for our, our local roads. But currently, townships do not have any representation on this on this board uh, to help determine uh, which grants, because it's all grant-based, uh, which grants are accepted uh, by townships. And that's why we are looking to have, uh, have at least one representative uh, on this board. We appreciate that. And thank you very much for your time and for the committee's time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any um, questions for Mr. Krieger? I see Representative Torkelson's hand is up and Representative Barr. So let's go ahead. And uh, these are either questions that testify or maybe even the author. So Representative Torkelson first. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to comment, uh, this is a, a important uh, move uh, for the townships. Uh, they did originally ask for two members and have, have graciously accepted uh, proposals to reduce that to one. Uh, still uh, important work. and. Uh, Hope that we can all vote in favor of this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Torgelson. Thank you for your work on this. Representative Barr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a real quick question. I'm curious, it, it, maybe I'm misreading it. Is the board now made up of six with the amendment? The DE that makes six members on the board, is that correct? Do you want to take that, that Mr. Author, I suppose. Mr. Krieger? Uh, yes, uh, right now there are currently five members on the board. And a township representative would make that six. Representative Barr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's the way I read it. Um, just, I don't have a problem with adding the townships. I, I agree that they should be there. I'm just curious if having a board of six when you come to voting and how you're spending money or applying for grants, if anybody foresees a problem with having an even number as opposed to an odd number. Um, valid point. I don't know if Mr. Krieger or... Uh... Uh, Representative Frederick wanted to respond. Mr. Krieger. Mr. Chair, if I might, uh, everyone so far has, uh, from my understanding, has gotten along very well. It's usually very amicable uh, in the discussions. Uh, at this point, I don't see any problem with that. Okay. Thank you very much. It's, it's on the record, uh, Representative Barr there. So uh, uh, thank you for your question. Um, all right, I do not see any additional member hands. Uh, appreciated the comments of uh, Representative Elkins, Torkelson, and Barr. Uh, Representative Frederick, did you have any uh, last uh, last thoughts you wanna leave us with? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I just wanna say that if that does uh, pose to be a problem in the future with having six members, we can always revisit adding that second township representative. Um, and I do want to say, too, uh, at the very beginning, uh, if I misunderstood, I thought you wanted me to just to talk about the amendment. So that's why I was like super, super brief. Um, but I think Mr. Krieger kind of covered everything I was going to say as well. So we, we, um, I just uh, appreciate you hearing the, the bill, and I uh, hope that I can have the committee support. We got the job done. We got the job done. Good testimony, good bill, and appreciate your work on this. So. With that, members, um, I am going to um, renew uh, the motion that House File 3216, as amended, uh, be sent to the General Register. Uh, and Mr. Dodge, please take the roll. Chair Hornstein. Hornstein votes aye. Hornstein, aye. Vice Chair Cagle. Aye. Cagle, aye. Representative Petersburg. Petersburg, aye. Petersburg, aye. Representative Barr. Aye. 
Barr, I. Representative Bernardi? I. Bernardi, I. Representative Elkins? Elkins, I. Elkins, I. Representative Frederick? I. Frederick, I. Representative Houseman? I. Houseman, I. Representative Heinrich? Heinrich, I. Heinrich, I. Representative Kosnick? Kosnick, I. Kosnick, I. Representative Mason? Mason, I. Mason, I. Representative Murphy? Representative Nelson? Nelson, I. Nelson, I. Representative Olson? Olson, I. Olson, I. Representative Richardson? I. Richardson, I. Representative Torkelson? Torkelson, I. Torkelson, I. Representative West? West, I. West, I. There are 16 ayes and zero nays. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Dodge. Thank you, members. And um, Representative Frederick, uh, we'll see you on the floor with this bill uh, whenever that comes up. So uh, members, that is it for our agenda today. We have uh, three pretty involved bills uh, on Thursday. So I'm guessing we'll be taking our entire committee time on Thursday uh, for those bills. And- uh, Mr. Chair, there is a hand up. Oh, okay. Thank that's you. me. Uh, Represent Petersburg. Sorry, I just didn't see no, that. No, that's okay. I, I just thought, since we have a little extra time today, I thought um, we might just talk a little bit more about what's coming up also. Uh, you know, yesterday you informed me that the Southwest Light Rail uh, audit is coming back to us, uh, mended a little bit. And I didn't know if you wanted just to share with the committee uh, what that amendment is and, and the, the direction that it's going to go. And, and whether or not it's still up for Thursday or not. Oh, well, I appreciate that, um, Representative Petersburg. And um, I know we had a chance to talk about this last night and I'm happy to share with the committee uh, where things are at uh, on that bill. It's an important bill. And um, we, we had uh, a long discussion on the House floor, as you all know. So the Senate did pass the, uh, the bill, the companion bill uh, to House File 3035 yesterday on the floor, they did it unanimously. Um, and uh, there was one small amendment uh, that they added and um, uh, Representative West, they loved your amendment, but they did tweak it slightly. Um, and no. I know Representative West, it's the Senate. But um, so uh, the, the I will move to concur, uh, basically, just so you all know, we're, you're, the Transportation get, Committee is getting a nice preview here, uh, Representative Petersburg, but um, the, um, the, uh, your excellent amendment, Representative West, uh, uh, as I recall, um, talked about uh, if there was, a, I think, a 5% overrun uh, in a certain amount of time, uh, that would need to be reported to the um, uh, chairs of the appropriate committees and ranking members. Um, and so I think that uh, my understanding is that um, they, uh, there was some interpretation that this could only be enacted once, but if their cost overruns repeatedly, then um, the amendment addresses that. And uh, the second piece that they changed was uh, they, instead of saying immediately, they said within a week. I think there was some question about you know, what the definition of immediately was. So that is really all they did. The, the, I'm glad they incorporated your amendment, Representative West, and they incorporated uh, Representative Petersburg's original amendment too. So um, I think we're good to go with a concurrence on Thursday, uh, but Representative Petersburg, this is a chance. If anyone has any questions, you can, you can, you can query me now and we can say well, I'm on the floor. No, thank you. I just thought since, since we're kind of aware of it, uh, it's, it's good for us to know um, what's going on. And the other question is, have we got any hint about when targets might be coming out? I don't. And I, I hope soon, um, you know, once we get the targets, I think there's a number of bills that are in the queue here that have, um, you know, some financial implications and we'll be better able to, um, you know, get some specific amounts. I don't like to bring bills that just have a blank appropriation in them, um, if it can be avoided. Obviously we do that, it is a practice, but um, to the extent possible, if we can, um, you know, get, get a target and get some bills that, um, you know, respect that target, um, we'll be in better shape. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And I just wanna say thank you for keeping me informed about what's going on. Our working relationship is very good and I, 
just uh, want to say thank you again for all that you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, Representative Petersburg. And um, uh, again, um, Thursday, you know, my understanding is we will have a, a vote on Thursday on the floor to concur with the Senate uh, uh, amendment. Um, it, you know, again, the minor technical changes to, to our amendment here that we had on the House floor. And then, uh, then we'll be on our way to the governor's desk and hopefully some transparency and accountability on this uh, Green Line Extension project. So thank you so much. Does anyone else have any, uh, and I feel like this is announcements, announcements, <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate your bringing that up, Representative Petersburg, and uh, giving everyone a little preview for Thursday. Okay, members. Well, you've got an extra 15 minutes here. And uh, with that, we are adjourned until Thursday.